a black male father has a licensed gun, is shot by unmarked police. And no identification on the vehicle at all. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. Put up the picture full mass. This is a hell of a story. You're looking at Mr. Daniel Lewis. He was 27 years of age, a black father of two children with a clean criminal background. I say that up front, shouldn't have to, but that's because typically that would be the line next from law enforcement. He had no criminal background, so they could not vilify him in the same way. He had a concealed weapon permit. He was shot and killed by police in South Florida. This was in a case that is now raising more questions than answers. So you see, Miss Angela Lewis in this picture, that is the mother. She's talking to reporters, obviously very emotional. The son of a retired New York police officer, Daniel Lewis, was killed on May 31st after being shot five times in his backyard. It was the backyard of his home, Miami Gardens. It's a location, that's a municipality in northern Miami-Dade County with the majority black population. So and you heard me right, son of a cop, okay? That night, Miami Gardens, Police officers were working with agents from the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. It's called a joint task force to combat gun violence. That's according to NBC Miami. Law enforcement officials told CBS Miami they were, quote, looking for somebody, end quote, but have not yet to release the name of that person or the reason why they were looking for that alleged person. Red flag number one, attorneys representing Lewis, the Lewis family said it all started when law enforcement agents in an unmarked black vehicle with no emergency lights, no sirens, began following his cousins and his sister. They were driving through the neighborhood in their car, believing gang members were following them. They panicked and drove into the backyard of their family's home. His sister then ran out of the car and into the home through the back door. Lewis, who was inside of the home, stepped out the back door with his gun to see what was going on and was shot and killed within seconds, okay? Now, let me remind you of the incident in Florida we reported on just a few weeks ago, where a man serving in the US military was shot and killed within a second, maybe less, because he decided to answer his door with his legally obtained gun. He didn't point it at anybody, the deputy decided to shoot him and kill him. Once again, this man has a license, concealed carry permit, he shot and killed. I watched my son take his last breath, the mother says, and that's the hardest thing a mother could ever do. From the first to the last, said his mother. Angela Lewis said this during a press conference in front of the Miami Gardens Police Department on July 2nd. According to NBC Miami, quote, nobody will understand what was taken from us. And all we want to know is why, why, why did it have to happen? Police are claiming he shot at them first, prompting them to return fire. But attorneys representing the Lewis family said none of the shells at the scene came from his gun. What was the rush? Question mark. What was the urgency to fire upon Mr. Lewis this night? That is the question of attorney Chris Lomax during the press conference during which attorney said they do plan to file a federal a, a lawsuit, likely federal according to NBC Miami. Uh, there was none. 
This was a bad shoot. It did not have to happen. It's been more than a month since the shooting and neither Miami Gardens police nor the ATF have released much information about the shooting, including details about the person they alleged they were supposedly looking for or confirmation of whether Lewis had even fired his gun. Not even confirmation of that. Quote, unfortunately, some individuals discharged firearms at some Miami Gardens detectives as well as some of my agents, Christopher Robinson, the agent in charge of the Miami ATF office told NBC Miami the night of the shooting. Quote, gunfire was returned, one individual struck, and he's unfortunately deceased. So that was a spin during the actual night of the incident. And since then, neither the local police nor the federal agency, they have not decided. They have neglected to provide any information corroborating their side of the story. There's more. Angela Lewis told the Herald that her 25 year old nephew who had hopped out of a car was taken into custody after being ordered to lie on the ground. But he was released within hours. Attorneys representing Lewis's family still have not determined whether he even knew they were cops. Quote, not once did anyone yell police, stop police, freeze. Attorney Ariel Lett said during the press conference, instead, what they did was they gunned down a law-abiding citizen in his backyard on his back doorstep without a warning, end quote. Under the known circumstances, and I emphasize known circumstances, Lett believes Lewis had every right to defend his home from people with guns who never identified themselves as cops. That's according to Local 10. The Castle Doctrine would seem to apply to you, it would apply that you have a man who committed no crimes, who was known that the family committed no crimes and who his sister just ran into the house screaming for her life as the car she was in was being shot at by unknown assailant. Um, a lot of unanswered questions here, but I would tell you this, if this shooting was justified, typically law enforcement will release evidence to support their claim. We have seen them do this time and time again. They will put it out on their Facebook page, on their Twitter account. They will provide information to try and contextualize the individual who is deceased as a villain. Even if they do not provide information germane to the actual shooting. So you mean to tell me that these two police agencies, one federal, the other one local, they cannot provide any information to corroborate that they were shot at? They cannot provide any information as to their, um, well, validation for why they were following or stalking another citizen. These things are outside of the norm for sure. Something doesn't smell right. All right, share your thoughts here. Yeah, they won't release more because they're likely lying as police often do, and they will not cop to the mistake. This has shades of, and I know it wasn't a no knock warrant, and the victims in this case have no record, and I don't know why you were following people. And But it reminds me of Breonna Taylor. Remember, yep. she was asleep, minding her own business. All of a sudden, there's a, a thud, a bang, a instantly entering. The, they thought they were being robbed. And when the boyfriend, who's still okay, you tried to charge him, but that wasn't necessary right. because you were yep. lying then. You didn't announce yourself. It's sick. So what black people have to understand is there the laws that are on the books weren't written for us, and they don't apply to us. Philando Steele knows that uh, as he rests. And others are finding out every single day. That's right. And you don't hear the gun rights advocates coming to the defense of this deceased young man. Where are they? That's right, because he doesn't fit their narrative. And that's the unfortunate reality of a lot of advocacy happening in this country. It is simply gaslighting. We're going to bring updates as updates develop.